Cookies? Cookies? From the perspective of interacting with the computer, everything you just saw in that ridiculous skit was real. I've done it with a device called the Leap Motion Controller. It consists of three infrared LEDs and then two cameras in between, and those perceive your hand in stereo. From that it figures out the positions, the roll pitch you are in XYZ, of all the different bones in your hand. It then exposes that information over an API which is only available on your computer. And then an application can talk to that API and do interesting stuff with it. So I've written an application called HandWavy, and it talks to that API, and it can trigger mouse and keyboard input from that information. It's very easy to create a proof of concept that will do something vaguely in this sort of direction within an hour or two. To get something that is usable on a daily basis, that takes a bit more work. Four months full time to be exact. That time has gone into a few key things. Cleaning up the data so that we perform precise actions first time every time. Making things customizable in a sensible way so that it can be adapted to the user's needs. We're going to circle back to this very soon. And tuning and improving it so that the default experience is one that will fit most people and work really, really well. It should be recognized that I'm not actually the first to do this. When I began the project, I actually did quite an extensive search looking for other projects. Maybe with the possibility of extending something to make it do what I wanted. But everything I found was very, very clearly in the proof of concept level. So who can use this? Well first, it's open source, so anyone can use this. There's a link in the description for where you can find the Leap Motion Controller. It works on Linux, Windows and Mac. Basically anywhere the Leap Motion Controller will work, this will work. It's easy to use, but it does require a bit of practice. And you will very much benefit from stomping out the bad habits right at the beginning. To help you with this, there's a video available on my Patreon page, which is freely available for everyone. It's called Getting the Most Out of Handwavy, and I highly recommend giving it a watch if you intend to use this. A link for that is in the description below. The gist of it is that you move your hand up and down, left and right, to move the mouse cursor around, much like you would with a touchpad. Just like with a touchpad on the laptop, you can also pull your hand away, just like you'd lift your finger off the touchpad, so then you can move the cursor in more precise steps. How close your hand is, is measured in zones, and it's specifically the active zone in which you actually move the cursor. Changing which zone your hand is in changes the behavior of hand wavy. Actions can be performed in two ways. You can move your hand the whole way through to the very last zone, which is called the action zone. I don't actually use this anywhere near as much as I thought I would. What I actually use instead is the gestures. Gestures are made up of segments, which is how far you tilt your hand, which zone your hand is in, and whether your hand is open or closed. So you can assign actions to whichever combination of gestures you like, and the combination of all of these different gestures that you define is called a gesture layout. I've made a few of these as examples, but there's so much more that you could do with this. We'll come full circle back to that in a moment as well. It's dynamically ambidextrous. This means that someone who is right or left-handed can swap places immediately without having to reconfigure anything. It detects which is your primary hand by simply the first hand that you put in is your primary hand. The second hand that you put in is your secondary hand. What this means in practice is the first hand that you put in is the hand that you do the cursor movement with and your primary gestures, like clicking, right clicking, blah blah blah. And you can put the secondary hand in if you want to do some additional gestures. One of the consequences of not physically touching something is you can't actually feel when you're physically interacting with a thing, or when you've, for example, lifted your finger away from the trackpad. To solve this, I've added audio events, which give you feedback as to what your hand's doing. These use the same events that the actions use that we talked about a moment ago. 
If you hear this noise, then you've discovered a bug. Have a look in the description to see how and where to report it. So hopefully by now you're just starting to get a small glimpse into just how customizable this is. There is so much more to tell. So I've got lots of documentation sitting on the repository, so that's all available for free. I've got lots of material on Patreon, and that includes things like a video showing you how the configuration works, how to apply examples, a video on how to create your own gesture layout, and a series of research and development videos that I recorded while I've been progressing through this project. For the last project, I created a Q&A video a couple of weeks after releasing the video. That's freely available on the Patreon, so if you haven't seen it, you may want to have a look at that. I'll also very likely do the same thing again this month, so if you're interested, that will be there as well. I'll place a link when it's done. So I've provided lots of example configurations in the repository. I keep coming up with more and more examples of ways that you can configure this, so whatever I tell you now is going to be a fraction of what's there later. Even since I made this list in preparation for doing this talk, I've added more. But a quick idea of, what, of the sorts of things that are there. There are a few different audio configuration examples. The default gives you notifications on all the sorts of things that are really good for you to learn, but those get pretty annoying once uh, you've got the hang of it. So you can turn that off. But there's actually a happy medium that I really like to use, which is to have your primary hand completely muted, because, well, hey, you use that one a lot, and you get the feel for that pretty quickly. But the secondary hand you use much less often, so leaving in the notifications for the secondary hand. But if you want absolute silence, there's a couple of different methods of doing that, and that's all documented, and you can see the pros and cons for those. There are a few different gesture layouts. The default one is grab click. That's the one where you close your hand to make a click. My favorite one is tilt click which is where you tilt your hand to make a click. I wanted to make this default configuration, but it's a bit harder to learn than grab click is. So it makes sense for new users to learn grab click first, and then you move over to tilt click, and the thing just makes sense. It works so, so well. So if you give hand wavy a go, I strongly recommend that you migrate to tilt click when you're ready. There are also a few configurations for various disabilities. Every time I've shown this to someone, they've come up with ideas on different disabilities that this could be helpful for, and I'm trying to accommodate those. I don't want to list those off for you because frankly I'm not qualified for that, and I don't want to be prescriptive. But if it might be useful for you, or might be useful for someone you know, definitely take a look. There is also a configuration option to choose between touchscreen versus touchpad operation. As you might guess from those names, the touchscreen configuration is an absolute positioning for the cursor, and the touchpad is a relative positioning for the cursor. The touchpad is a default one. I began with the touchscreen. It seemed really cool in my head, but when I actually went to do it, it was a real nuisance to use. The touchpad just made so much more sense. So that's what's default. I really don't recommend using touchscreen in any configuration that you actually want to use, but I thought it was really interesting to compare the two, so I left it in there as a configuration option. Here's me using the touchscreen configuration to hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, hit the like button. And that was pretty awkward. Comparatively, here's me using the touchpad configuration to hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, and hit the like button. You may have noticed the purple hand there. Um, that is a paper cutout. That leads us on to the last configuration example that I wanted to show you. It is the foot gesture layout, and that is literally where you uh, put on some black socks and tape a paper cutout of a hand onto your foot. You mount the sensor under your desk, and then you control the mouse cursor using your feet. I haven't put a lot of time into developing this and making it better, so it is literally a proof of concept. It's a proof of concepts of proof of concepts. It is very frustrating and difficult to use, but it does work, so it shows it can be done. If this would make a meaningful difference to your life, there is a link in the description of how to let me know, and we can talk and work out whether it's worth devoting some time into developing it further. One of my motivations for doing this in the first place is that I've been programming for over 30 years. With that comes the need to balance the wear on my wrists, and this is an extra tool to help me do that. For my use case, I'm going to do a mixture of using hand wavy and using a conventional mouse and mix the two as feels right. I'm not aware of any studies going into the ergonomics and long-term health impacts of using a tool like this. So it's really important that if you do use this, you need to pay attention to how you're feeling 
And if you have any doubts or if you have any problems or any pains or any discomfort, please get medical advice as fast as you can. So should you use it? I'm going to reword that very slightly. Will I continue to use it? Yes. <sighs> Absolutely. It's an absolute pleasure to use. Every time someone sees it for the first time, there's that wow factor as well. I love having a tool that I can use and have sensible defaults. And then when I have an idea, I can just jump into the configuration and make it happen. And a few minutes later, it's all working. I've been using this almost exclusively for the last four months, and it has come a long way in that time. There's still plenty more that I want to do. I don't want to give you the impression that it's perfect, but it is getting really good, and it's still getting better. I'd like to give a big thank you to my new patrons. I try to make the bonus material compelling by itself, so if you haven't had a look yet, now's a really good time to do so. On a completely different note, if you'd like to continue the investigation into the cookies from the beginning of the video, I suggest watching this video here. Anyway, I'm Kevin. This is Random Case Hat. So we're going to go bonk, and we're going to turn on the bell, we're going to go to all, we're going to head over here to the light button, that is so much easier! <laughs>